All right, guys, welcome into my official college football week 13 bold predictions where I go through right around 20 of my bold predictions for college football, the final week here of the regular season. And guys, we kick it off. I do have Ohio State beating Michigan with Blake Corum not being at 100%. Also, Donovan Edwards dealing with an injury. It'll be very uh, interesting to see how Michigan plays this. And and if they do lose, you know, what happens with Blake Corum? Because when you look at Blake Corum and this Michigan offense, he gets 25, 30 carries a game. He had 18 carries in the first half against Illinois. You know, you don't have him. Maybe you don't have Donovan Edwards. I'm guessing Corum will try and play how you know healthy he is is really going to be an issue and it gets really confusing because if Ohio State beats Michigan, Michigan, they've got a loss, but Blake Corum might not have been 100%. Maybe they try and use that as an excuse, but then you also have to look at their horrible non-conference schedule. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I think this year Ohio State gets it done after getting embarrassed on the road last year. It should be around 50 degrees, so it's going to be warmer for the Buckeyes and their offense. Even with the running back concerns with Trevion Henderson, I'm sure probably not going to play. Mayan Williams dealing with an injury. Dallin Hayden, the true freshman, really coming on right now for Ohio State. I think they win versus Michigan in that one. Number two, Notre Dame wins at USC, and the Pac-12 is out of the playoffs. I just think Notre Dame matches up really well with USC, and this is Marcus Freeman's breakout game, and if you're a Notre Dame fan, you have such an amazing, amazing opportunity right now end of the season, going into the offseason, you've got a Heisman level quarterback in Caleb Williams who right now is virtually tied with C.J. Strout as the Heisman favorite according to betting odds. You're Notre Dame, you're Marcus Freeman, you win this game on the road. You want to talk about offseason momentum, you want to talk about recruiting momentum, especially on the defensive side of the ball. If you hold Caleb Williams down, this is a huge opportunity for Notre Dame. Obviously, it's a very big opportunity for USC as well, but I do think there is a common thought amongst college football fans that USC is a year early. We never thought USC would be contending for you know a playoff spot at this point. Sure, they could get there, but it just feels like USC doesn't have enough on defense. I do think Lincoln Riley with Caleb Williams back next year and probably a lot of transfer portal defensive players, they're going to be better next year. They're going to be you know a possibly a top three or four team all year, but I do like Notre Dame and the Pac-12 would be eliminated if USC loses. TCU hangs on versus Iowa State. They take on Kansas State in the Big 12 Championship. So Kansas State just has to win this week in their game, and that will be the matchup. I do think Iowa State for sure covers the 10-point spread, even though TCU is at home, because this is how TCU plays virtually every game. It's always close. I think this game, they'll always be up, but it will be close, and TCU will hang on late, and they'll be undefeated going into the Big 12 championship game for them. C.J. Strout secures the Heisman with four passing touchdowns. I just think Ohio State is going to throw the ball a little bit more, and C.J. should be able to get uh, some legitimate good stats because the running game, there is a question there with the injuries. So C.J. Strout, this is really his Heisman moment. It's been like pulling teeth a little bit for Ohio State in this offense the the last three or four weeks. You had Drake May, you know, he was a Heisman contender, he drops off. Blake Corum's now injured, he was a Heisman contender. Maybe he still has a chance at winning it, but, you know, with his injury, it's going to be tough. Either way, I think it is C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud was the favorite in the preseason. He was the favorite throughout every single week, and now we kind of have Caleb Williams coming on, but I think C.J. Stroud ends up winning it. Nebraska shocks Iowa. Purdue heads to the Big Ten Championship game. I just want this to happen, honestly. And it's nothing against Iowa, but but I think we've seen enough of Iowa football in the Big Ten Championship game. We remember last year they lost 42 to 3. This year they might they might even have a worse offense. Nebraska is 10 and a half point underdogs 
in that rivalry game at Iowa, but Iowa's best offensive weapon, Sam Laporta, the tight end, who has over 600 receiving yards, is out with an injury. So I think Nebraska gets a huge win with their interim head coach and has some momentum going into the offseason. And really, I, I would just love to see a different team in the Big Ten Championship from the West, whether it's Purdue, Minnesota, or Illinois. Uh, FSU and Florida has a lightning delay on Black Friday night, and Florida State ends up winning by 21. Florida State is so good. Right now, they're sitting at, I think, 9.5 point favorites. I love them winning this game by a ton. They're on such a roll. There's no reason to really overthink it. Um, they're going to keep rolling against the bad Florida team who just lost to Vanderbilt and literally has no motivation to play. Uh, but there could be some weather, guys. We'll be watching, and that's kind of my bold prediction there on the weather. Also, some significant weather in the Ole Miss uh, Thanksgiving night game. There's going to be a crazy storm there for that one. Tulane wins in Cincinnati 24-21 to and they head to the American Championship. It seems like it's Tulane's year this year. They are two-point underdogs, I believe. I've got them winning a lower scoring game. This is a noon start on Black Friday. Auburn plays Alabama tough higher scoring game. So this is a combination of Auburn actually showing some fire under their interim head coach, along with Alabama. Just, you know, nothing to play for. It's really been an unfortunate season for them. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're not happy with how it turned out. They're already basically out of the playoffs. There is a specific path for Alabama, but Whenever we talk about that, it never ends up happening. So for Alabama, they're pretty much done at this point. They will probably be going to a New Year's Six Bowl or at least the Citrus, which possibly presents the option for Bryce Young and Will Anderson and players like that to sit out, which would not be good. That's not what, that's what we're trying to avoid in college football, and it keeps happening. So we'll see what ends up happening. But Auburn has a 22-point underdog. It just feels like they're going to be more up for this game. I'm guessing Bama will win it, but it just it seems like too much based on how Alabama's played recently. Clemson handles South Carolina in a rain game, and the debate becomes a one-loss Clemson versus a one-loss Michigan with a possible Blake Corum injury excuse. That is my prediction. I think Michigan fans are going to spin it. They're going to say Blake Corum wasn't healthy. He's going to be healthy by the time the playoffs starts. And then Clemson's going to be like, listen, we have one loss. We're going to be conference champions if they win the ACC. And the debate, if USC is out of the picture, we're talking about a one-loss Clemson ACC champion if they beat North Carolina versus a one-loss Michigan whose only loss was on the road to the second-best team right now in college football, but they also have that horrible non-conference schedule. They also do have a very good win over Penn State as well, though. So this is a very interesting debate that could possibly happen between a one-loss Clemson and a one-loss Michigan. That is my prediction on that. Penn State trounces Michigan State, goes to a New Year's Six Bowl. So certainly if you're a Michigan fan, if you're an Ohio State fan, you're rooting for Penn State here. No doubt you want them to be as high as possible. Right now they're ranked 11th. They might be able to get inside of the top 10. And I know there are some people that are saying they're going to face Alabama in the Citrus. I think they deserve a New Year's Six Bowl if they annihilate Michigan State. Um, you know, listen, let's be honest, man. For as good as, it, as of a year as Tennessee has had, I think the Hendon Hooker injury, you've got to knock them down a little bit. I, I you hate say you really hate saying it, but we'll listen, we'll see how they do with Joe Milton. We'll we'll give Tennessee a chance, but if they struggle against Vanderbilt with Joe Milton. I want to see Penn State in a New Year's Six Bowl. That's just my opinion. Nothing against Tennessee. They've had a great year, but backup quarterback, and they also do have a very bad defense. Penn State is just the more complete team. Uh, Minnesota beats Wisconsin. That's a very solid road win if they're able to get it. And really, if Minnesota beats Wisconsin, they need to finish ranked. Minnesota is a top 25 team according to basically any metric. Nobody talks about them because they can't throw and they've had a backup quarterback, but this is a solid team with a good defense and a superstar running back that has actually become underrated because they had that middle of the season struggle. You know, they were ranked and then they, they lost two games in a row. But if they finish by beating Wisconsin, they need to be ranked from the Big Ten for sure. Oregon and Oregon State and Washington and Washington State, both of those games, both of those rivalry games will be decided by a field goal. That is my prediction. I think 
I do think Oregon barely beats Oregon State, and I think Washington State upsets Washington at home. Both of these games should be really good rivalry games, though, out of the Pac-12. LSU almost loses to Texas A&M. I want this to happen so bad. It would be hilarious. You know how pissed CBS would be? CBS, all, if LSU beats Texas A&M, all week we're going to hear from CBS. If LSU upsets Georgia, which we know is not happening, but they're going to spin it. If LSU upsets Georgia, they're going to make the playoffs as a two-loss team. I would love to see AM beat LSU and then try and hype up the SEC championship with LSU after they lost to Texas AM. They're nine point road favorites right now. I think they're going to beat AM. I do, but it would be hilarious. It would be a, a golden moment to see. Big Ten. So these are my projections on the championship games. The Big Ten is going to be Purdue versus Ohio State. That's if Iowa loses to Nebraska in an upset and then. Purdue beats, I think it is Indiana. Uh, Purdue actually might lose to Indiana, honestly, because they're on the road. The American UCF versus Tulane. I believe that game will be played in Central Florida because the American does the on-campus thing for the championship. And I think Central Florida beat Tulane a few weeks ago, if I am remembering correctly. Pac-12, I have it USC versus Oregon. I believe how it works in the Pac-12, if Oregon loses to Oregon State and Washington beats Washington State, Washington goes. If Oregon loses to Oregon State, Washington loses to Washington State, and Utah beats Colorado, Utah goes. And honestly, I think Utah is probably better than both Oregon because Oregon has an injured quarterback right now, and Washington. So I would actually want to see USC versus Utah. That's what I would want to see, but I do think Oregon wins by a field goal in their rivalry game. Ole Miss wins on Thanksgiving. Lane Kiffin still leaves. <laughs> uh, I think that's my final prediction. Um, I do have a strong feeling that uh, Ole Miss is going to win at home. They need the win after their horrible loss. Lane Kiffin needs the win. But it does feel like Lane Kiffin... I don't know, man. You know, it, It's weird. The, the, the coaching carousel is really odd with college football. But it's like... If, if there's anything we can learn after last year, it's if you think they're going to leave, they're going to leave. I mean, everyone was leaving the Brian Kelly fiasco, the Lincoln Riley fiasco. So it just feels like, I mean, I guess, you know, Ole Miss fans are trying to cope and say he just wants more money. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, but that's just a little fun prediction. So those are my week 13 uh, predictions here. But guys, make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.